Back in second grade, Walnut made this electronic flashcard program for me. It was so I would be able to learn my math facts and spelling, but also be able to learn to type. Actually, there's a lot of history to this program. He actually made one for himself all the way back when he was in seventh grade. Later, he rewrote the program at Ace Basic with the Commodore Amiga. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Let's get to it. Okay, trip down memory lane. First, back in the day, around 10, got my first VIC-20, and then, like a year later, which felt like 10 years, kid time, I got a Commodore 64. Something went wrong with it, I guess, because I remember getting the newer model, but it still was exactly the same thing, Commodore 64. And then I got a Commodore 128, which was uh, twice as much RAM, but it had a mode where you could just boot right back into 64 mode, so you could play all the games you already owned. Everything. And then when I hit around 19, in 91 or so, eh, it's probably 92, I got a Commodore Amiga. But what we're going to look at is uh, how you can emulate an Amiga and you can actually get the software and you could even use the flashcard program that I wrote way years back. And I did it using a compiler called Ace by David Ben of Australia. It was really cool. Back then it seemed like if you were using an Amiga, you knew about this uh, Ace compiler. So I'm going to show you how to compile. Okay. So what you can do if you have a PC is go visit amynet.net. And this thing, to me, looks like it did back in the 90s, 20 years ago. Really? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So, um, go to it. You can then find the Ace Basic Compiler. The one I grabbed was one of the early versions. The later versions just have all the source and everything. But this was the Ace 2.4 distribution. Um, looks like it was put out around 96, so over 20 years ago. And again, that's David Ben down there. So you, you, if you download it, you get you an emulator first, and then you download it to one of the drives on the emulator, and paste it in there, and then uh, you can just run your emulator. And I use the Win UAE. You can Google that and download it. And what it's doing is emulating an Amiga on the PC. Okay. <laughs> you can emulate anything. All that old tech back then. Emulate the, the Amiga was only 16 megahertz. Where you know one processor, 16 megahertz where now I'm emulating it on an 8-core processor with 4 point something gigahertz. Was WinUAE what we used for the Commodore 64 emulator? Uh, no, that was one, it was like Hox C64, and I have your video, I'll show it here in a second, the uh, the video where you uh, oh, wrote your it. first program right. three, four years ago, I guess it was. It was counted a, to a million, I think. Yeah, and it counted to a million, yeah, to and you caught it. <laughs> yeah. It, it ran overnight. Yeah, it emulated, and because that thing only ran about one megahertz, which is incredibly sounds fast, like a million times a second, but it's not that fast when it comes to trying to render uh, movies and stuff. Here, I'm unpacking with LHA. That's the common tool for unpacking. It's kind of like the zip tool back in the day. So I use LHA to to unpack Ace. Take a look at the install, and David Ben has told you what you got to do. It just says unpack the archive, stick where you want it, and then update your startup files. And so I'll do that right now. Copy it over to a new directory I made on my program's hard drive. And then I unpacked it there. And again, I've sped all this up. Uh, the media was very slow. But look at all that stuff that he wrote. That is just amazing. That was a very ambitious project but it helped out a lot of people who wanted to make a uh, compiled version of their basic programs right. you can just double click the icon and here I'm editing the startup file what's wild about Amiga OS to look at it now you think it was Linux everybody that loves Linux uh, you would think it's that all the little things you're doing but this was before uh, Linux you know the, the Amiga OS came out in the mid 80s so, you know, that dude was, wasn't even in college yet. Uh, of course, he just uh, kind of made a hack of Unix. But back then, the Amiga, they, they bragged about being the first true multitasking computer. Uh, Windows was nowhere near that. You could only do one thing at a time. You couldn't have Excel and Word open at the same time and stuff like that. Or the Amiga, it could, um, you could drag down a screen and have an, an entirely separate computer in the background. And they were already doing that back then. Look at that. 4,401 peephole removals. <laughs> well, maybe David will answer that for us. What is a peephole? So there it all unpacked. 
I keep forgetting all the, the little DOS commands. So here's the code. You see that? The last time I touched it and uploaded it to the AmyNet was February 11th, 1996. And um, like code I do today, constants are up top. A lot of functions declared there. Um, and then right there is getting into the part where it starts the execution. And then the next part down, you're getting into uh, where all the subroutines are. Well, I found there was a couple of subroutines in there that were hidden uh, that weren't actually part of a comment at all. I must not have got them to work right. But here's the flashcard program. You can actually go to aimynet.net today and still get this thing. If you're into retro gaming or retro computing, go get questions on, on aimynet. Of course, it's free. And so this one actually was the most fancy, even the one I wrote for you isn't as fancy because it does all the speech and, right. and, and uh, does responses. And... Yep, that got me through a lot of tests. Got me through German. Even though I can't speak it, I sure could uh, ace the test because it was all just blind memorization. <laughs> you sure? And there's the old uh, take your error like a man. Or you can override it. Uh, call it a typo. I always hated having to do that. And then also, just like yours, it'll let you repeat the ones that you got wrong only, so you don't have to go back and take ones that were easy and waste time. You can focus on things that gave you trouble. Everything here you see was compiled in Ace Basic by David Ben. Now, one thing that's neat, the kind of a lesson here, you know, this is 20 years ago. A guy once told me that the uh, days and weeks drag by, but the years just fly by. And I was made me think, you know, why, why is that? Well, the reason is because you live your days and weeks in short-term memory. And when you reflect over the years, well, the long-term memory, not as much uh, committed in there. And that's where I look at this and I think about all the things, you know, using Ace Basic back in the 90s and the, the countless hours I put in making this program and other programs. By putting your time to things that build for the long term, you'll be amazed after 20 years on where you can be. So the moral story is, you know, always self-teach, always do things that stretch and grow you. Don't just stay in the short term looking at kitten videos and, and things like that, even though that's fun. But if that's all you do with your time, boy, 20 years will fly by in a heartbeat and you really won't have as much to show for it. Where, you know, I look at this period in my life and how every year was like that year. I was just doing something a little more. So that's pretty much it. That's our trip down memory lane with Ace Basic by David Ben. And um, maybe we'll practice a little Python as much as I don't like Python. <laughs>